Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to another video and first of all, I hope you're all having a great New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. But anyway, today I want to talk about what it's like going to an F1 race and more specifically, my experience at one being last year's British Grand Prix at Silverstone. Also, just to clarify, I was only there on the Sunday, so I didn't see any of qualifying or practice. So each F1 race of the year is preceded by races from lower motorsports like Formula 2 and Formula 3. Or when I went there, GP3 as it was called last Last year. I arrived at the track at about 20 past 8 early in the morning, midway through the 15 lap GP3 race and when you're watching on TV, whether it be an F1 car or an F3 car, you have no idea how insanely loud these cars are until you hear them in person. <laughs> The GP3 race ended at about 20 to 9, with Nelson Piquet's son, Pedro Piquet, taking the victory. Up next was the 21 lap Formula 2 race at 20 past 9, and I don't really remember much from the races leading up to the F1 race, as all the big screens were miles away and you could hardly make out what lap it was, let alone what position anyone was in. Anyway, the race was won by Maximilian Gunter and was incredible to watch. The next event was the only non-open wheeled event that day, being a race in the Porsche Mobile 1 Super Cup at 11.25. It was all well and good, but to be honest, at the time I really didn't care and just wanted to get to the F1 race, since I didn't know a single driver and had absolutely no idea about the series whatsoever. Also, I forgot to mention I was watching the race from here around Maggots and Beckett's, since I thought it would be cool to watch the cars fly past in what, in my opinion, is my favourite part of Silverstone. And also, it was probably the closest area any spectators could be from the cars while on track in the entire circuit. The only problem with watching the race from here was the lack of really any action whatsoever. I could count the number of dramatic moments I saw there from the entire day on a single hand. With that being said though, I'd say watching cars drive through Maggots and Beckett's is similar to watching cars drive through a Rouge. You'll barely ever see any overtakes, but it's still incredible to watch the cars go through such a crazy part of the circuit. Now I've got that cleared up, the next event was a parade featuring loads of past F1 cars celebrating Silverstone's 70th anniversary. Unfortunately, however, somehow I lost the videos I took when I was there, so the footage you're seeing on screen is a clip from the YouTube channel Jan Oaks. If you want to see the full video and subscribe to their channel, it's in the description. But anyway, at the time, I couldn't care less about these classic cars and just wanted to get on with the F1 race. But now, looking back, I'm gutted I don't have any surviving footage since this event had some of the most legendary cars present in the sports history, including many championship winning cars like a Lotus 25 from the early 60s, a Benetton from the early 90s, and more modern cars like Vettel's 2012 Red Bull. Also, as a side note, I was blown away at the time by how loud that Red Bull was, since I only really started watching F1 during the V6 hybrid era. After that, at about half past one, there was a presentation from the Red Arrows. For those who don't know, the Red Arrows are a British aerobatics team who are just insane. Some of the stunts they managed to pull off at speeds well over 300 miles per hour are just ridiculous. And finally, by 10 past 2, the wait was finally over and the F1 race began. And wow, only when you see the cars fly past in person, you can truly comprehend how insanely quick the drivers are going. On TV, the cars look quick, there's no doubt about that, but in person, it's almost unbelievable how the cars just appear and disappear in the blink of an eye. So even though where I was, I saw little to no action, it was still a fantastic race, and looking back, in my opinion, it was the fourth best race of the 2018 season, behind Germany in third, the USA in second, and Azerbaijan in first. After the race and podium celebrations, the crowd were allowed onto the track and could make their way to the fan forum where they could see some of the F1 drivers be interviewed. My phone had overheated by this point, so I don't have any footage of it and can barely find any videos from it at all, but I do remember Hamilton and Alonso coming onto the stage and answering a few questions, and it was also especially cool seeing Alonso in person before he announced his retirement at the end of the year. But easily my favourite part was when Verstappen and Ricardo came on stage, and Verstappen kind of peer pressured Ricardo to start singing in front of the crowd. One, two, one, two, three! If 
people want to say F1 drivers are just soulless PR machines, then just chum this. But anyway, by about half seven, I went home, and yeah, that's my experience at a Grand Prix. Now, would I recommend going to one? Well, yeah, it's a once in a lifetime experience to see the F1 car speeding past during a race, and I'll never forget my experience at the 2018 British Grand Prix. Attending a Grand Prix can be very expensive, however, and the British Grand Prix is no exception. In fact, it's the third most expensive Grand Prix to gain entry to behind, unsurprisingly, Abu Dhabi and Monaco. But even though it's expensive, I think attending a Grand Prix is worth every penny, and if you can, I can't urge you enough to go to one. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this quick video. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe, comment, share, and I hope you all have a great New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. And until next time, bye.